This imaginative collaboration here, uh, what I like about it is that it suggests that we can articulate things that are in our imagination better than things that we actually see. Photography is very, can be very concise and it can be very obvious and paintings can create a lot of imagination. So together you have something that actually exists in the lens versus something that you can paint that maybe doesn't quite exist or maybe lends itself to what already exists. So it's a beautiful combination. Think about the two terms, constructive interference. I can't think of two words that are less um, joined together. Uh, and yet, I think because of his collaboration now with the photographer, which is interesting, I think both of their philosophies have merged. I think that's what really draws me to, um, to this concept. And the use of those two terms is, is unique. And I think it makes the viewer respond in a different way. It's interesting because he's using um, Louise's beautiful photographs and Duda is modifying them constructively. <laughs> so he's interfering. Um, and I think I think he's very aware, and it's certainly happening you know, in the Amazon in Brazil, that we tend, uh, humans, tend to be destructive to our landscapes and our world. And uh, this is sort of a, another way of, of handling the natural world with, but constructively. I think it's a fantastic collaboration because Luis, uh, and I'm speaking as an artist because he's my good friend as well, uh, he travels all over the world and he takes very strategic pictures of all different things and certain pictures of him just speak to Duda. When Duda looks at some of his pictures, he say, yes, this one. And he just goes and throw his brushes and his colors and it come out spectacular. Duda has done a lot of collaboration throughout his years and this particular one is really one of my favorites. Luis had the idea to invite Duda uh, to, you know, to do something independent, like say, well, give some you know, colors, give some, you know, life, give some, you know, uh, something different. And uh, Duda started to take his pictures and change it, and, and it was amazing the way that they start to work. What you see in the series is really the beginning. We're going to have a series of black and white on this. We're going to have big installations. Later on, we might move on to cities. You know, a river might come through uh, in the middle of a, of a city, in the middle of a bridge. We're just discussing that. So we're really at the beginning stages of this. And we're right in front of our installation. And so, so this installation is about it's like the shades of the trees, the branches, and, and you see the leaves sort of falling. What I like about his work is he has his signature uh, all over the place. You see the leaf, that blue leaf, in almost every painting, and that, that is a, a, a strong representative of his work, which is meant to be healing and, and, and refreshing. Uh, and in almost every piece you find that blue leaf even in this exhibition he has the blue leaves uh, hung uh, from the ceiling uh, to again play on that same theme and these leaves to him and to people that look at this represent life the metaphor of a tree is so powerful because you gotta plant a seed and the seed takes a long time it needs to be nurtured it takes long time to be rooted and then if a tree is not well rooted won't stay up so it's a huge metaphor of life if you look at like for example the uh, the watermarks like in the in the tree uh, the way his 
he draws his lines. You could distinguish it from other artists. When you do uh, something creative, you put something new on the ordinary vision. It's like a cave with water in it and it has sand. Oh my gosh, you made this, this is crazy. I was kind of interested in his work because he was different. Uh, and when I got to know um, Duda, I found out why he was different. Duda is a unique individual and his work is always contemporary, uh, always looking for the cutting edge. What I really find unique about Duda's art is the way he continues to take risks and branch out as an artist. Um, if you look at his book, you can see through the retrospective of his career that he's not an artist that gets comfortable in one style, that whether he's um, doing performance or collaborative work with a photographer or creating murals on a wall, he's always growing and expanding. The book tells two stories, how I get out of my studio because the artist works in a very uh, um, uh, insulated area, you know, in the studio is the, is, the, is the temple where you're just dialoguing with yourself, the things you see, the things you hang on the walls, you know, so it shows a little bit about that process, but then it shows then I come out and I start doing performances on the streets and, and, and community murals and, and, and video installations where I'm more in confrontation or better say interaction with the public. The power transformation is when I create an artwork, you know, it, it somehow creates a dialogue to the people and the people creates a dialogue with me. So it maybe it creates this energy where people might be thinking about different things, might open their minds to think or rethink about some things. So it does the same to me. Sometimes I have people look at my artworks and telling me things that I didn't think about and say, wow, this is really great. One of my favorite pieces in this uh, entire collection is one that's standing before me or behind me here, Constructive Interference number six. And there's a, a sense of uh, a landscape that's desolate and then something superimposed on it that is alive. It speaks to me about my own experience and about something that's universal and timeless. I think that's what art must be. 500 years from now, this work will be relevant. You know, if it were produced a thousand years ago, it would still speak to people at that place and at that time in just a powerful way. Personally, I, I believe that Duda's art has had a significant impact in the art in Jersey City. First, because he's been here for so many years. And second, be, second because of his influence. He has been able to influence uh, not just folks like myself or marketplace leaders, and, and who have been here for over 23 years, but folks in, in the public square, especially in City Hall. So his influence on, on many of us uh, has made him one, in my opinion, one of the lead artists in our great city. What intrigues me is he is a man that lived the journey. He knows the people, he knows the struggle, he symbolizes every facet of society, he's been through the journey, and so he incorporates this into his art. I really appreciate his work. I think he had been a, uh, you know, a, a, a good inspiration for me as a, well, first of all, I'm an engineer, but I'm also as an artist, which I enjoy art. And you can see many different kinds of aspects of different art. So he's really evolving, he's just changing through the different times, through all the period that we have known him. It's uh, very interesting. Well, I, I just think today uh, was great to be back in Jersey City. Uh, I've been touring for the past two years in and out, doing stuff in New York, Brazil. Uh, we're planting a few projects in Europe now. And uh, But Jersey City is kind of my city, you know. I, I moved here many years ago. It was right next to Manhattan. Uh, and um, it's good to be home, you know, in this place called the Art House Production is one of the, the, the places was birth here and it deals with the arts and it's been growing so much and it's good to be back around the block.